Okay, this is part two. One thing I wanted to mention that I forgot in the last one is this edge that I did, this black edge around. Uh, I this is what it looked like before. I forgot I wanted. I like to add a uh, outer glow and set it to basically something like this color burn. Uh, you can change it to black or the you know lighter the lighter this color, the less it burns and on color burn. Uh, and you can fiddle with all these settings and noise and opacity and all this stuff to kind of get what you want, but it kind of looks like a burnt edge. Uh, just an easy way to add an effect that, that I, I particularly like. So I just did that. Um, I just merged those layers. <coughs> so now I have my parchment layer and my grid layer. Next, I want to draw my dungeon. So what I do is I go and I select my marquee tool. This is going to be a pretty simple dungeon. I'm just going to, you know, this is the one I made earlier, uh, and you can see this one. I sort of did an idea where I had a hammer in the center, with rooms coming off to the side, and a temple uh, with like little rounded walls and a triangular room. You can, and these are secret rooms. You can design this however you want, and as weird and strange shapes as you want. That's one of the nice things about doing it yourself. Um, so maybe for this particular tutorial I want I'm going to draw like maybe I want all perfectly square rooms and I'm going to start like a checkerboard pattern or something you know, maybe I don't want a perfect checkerboard maybe but see that doesn't quite work maybe that'll be the the secret room okay and then uh, let's do something like this now this could be who knows what it could be like a hall of gestures or gestures, jesters, or whatever you can imagine. It might be hard to find a checker patterned type dungeon, though pre-made on the internet. So I draw my rooms, right, and I can, oh, I guess I should mention, <laughs> this is pretty important, I have my select tool on add. Up here on these little boxes are different settings. What add does is it doesn't delete the first selection I make, it just adds to it. And that's why I'm able to draw uh, more rooms without, you know, and I can connect them. I can maybe make this one a, a funny shaped room. And it, and it combi they combine with the previous thing. And that's handy because you can do different effects. Like I could make this round, you know, and play around. You can use the angle one, the poly polygon one, to add very creative shapes. Um, another way you can you can do this. Well, I'll show you real quick how to do hallways. Hallways are just slender rectangles. So I'm going to make this my passage and this my passage. But there's going to be a hallway here. So let's draw a little hallway. See, and you can make them as wide as you want. This is five foot square, so that's a pretty narrow hallway. Um, this is a small map. Maybe these are ten foot squares. You know, I don't know. But you get the idea. You work with scale and you can fine tune it. Another way to draw more uh, odd shapes or whatever, another way I like to do it is I go to this mask button over here, uh, edit and quick mask, Q, we'll bring it up, and you get this, and you use your paintbrush, and whatever paintbrush shapes you want now will work to make a selection, so I'm just going to paint over, I'm going to make it white, and I'm going to paint a little, a little doorway where the checkers go. That's the secret one. Anyway. And make a little way to this. And maybe there's two into this room. Maybe there's one that comes this way. I can make these bigger. Um, I guess straight ones are kind of defeating the purpose of this exercise. So I'll make a round one that comes around like that. And Maybe this one comes up and goes in between somehow and loops around. You know, weird, weird things. Okay, and then when I'm done, I'll go back. Now you see it's drawn a line around everything I just did. Now I'm ready to make my walls. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to name it Walls. And I'm going to use Edit, Stroke. I want it to be thicker than one pixel. 15 to 20 is usually pretty good. The color isn't critical. Um, you can set it here if you want, or you can change it later. So I'm just using medium gray. Oops, you want it to be 
outside the line. Inside would put it all inside the rooms, and you don't want that. Because the rooms start to scale. You don't want to encroach upon these narrow hallways and stuff. You want the line to trace around the outside. You hit OK, and it draws the line. So, I'm going to, well, I'm going to leave it selected for now. I'm going to do another layer under walls real quick here with a darker shade of gray. Is that a song? I think it might be. Oh, I still got it on pattern. My grid, foreground. And I'm going to delete what I just did. And, oh, come on. It's not working. I deleted what I just did. Delete. There. Okay. Delete didn't take. And so there's my floor. I'm going to deselect. I didn't really work that well with it. Got little hiccups in there. It's not critical. Um, typically what I do for the floor, this is just kind of a mask tool so I can easily select the, floor, the, the area of the floor. Um, but as you can see, you can get a little, to get it to line up perfectly, you can get a little problem. So sometimes I just go in here and you know, fill the whole thing, fill the whole thing gray. Um, so I'm going to go back to my walls for now. I'll worry about the floor in a minute. The trick with the walls is bevel and boss and drop shadow. Let's see if I can pull this over enough so you can see. Hit a drop shadow. You know what? I'm going to cancel. This floor is too. Edit. Air image. Adjust. Hue saturation. Bring this floor up. It's too dark to show you. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my walls. I double click on the layer to bring up this layer style. And I'm going to put a drop shadow on the walls. Twiddle with the, twiddle with the settings. Bevel and boss. Contour if I want it. Texture. Make. In here you can really screw around and play a lot. Uh, there's tons of different textures. I might try that one. And it doesn't look too big, so let's bring it down. And it looks inverted. Let's bring this to the depth so it looks like it's poking out. There, yeah, it kind of looks like bricks. Okay. Oh, one more thing in that window I like to do is I like to set the color here. Uh, don't have to, but it's handy sometimes. So I do color overlay, whatever I want the dungeon walls. Maybe they're a little mossy green. Something like that. Alright. Or just gray or whatever. So there's my style. Now, once I get this all looking like how I want, I can go in here to styles, and I can s new style, and I can save what I've just done as a new style. And that way, next time I draw a dungeon, all I have to do is go in here to apply all these effects. I just click, click it. Like I have a lava one set up here. Let me save this one as a new style. I'll call it mossy walls. Walls, and there it adds it. So now, if I want to change these to lava walls, because I have one set up already, I go, okay. And there's my lava walls, you know. Um, makes it handy. So I'll go back to that. Now, I'm going to clean this up a little with my paintbrush. Uh, because I have it on color overlay, it doesn't matter what color I have. And I'm going to clean up these little areas that didn't quite fill in like this. You know, I can make these secret rooms if I want, uh, but in this case I don't really want them to be secret rooms. So I'm going to fill them in. <coughs> I'm going to fill in the outside too. Oops. Continuous. Fill in the outside rooms. Because I went to all the work to make that fancy parchment, I'm going to make the outside walls just not go all the way to the edge. I'm going to select, select that, I'm going to invert it, inverse, and delete. I'm going to do the same thing with that. I'm going to delete the floor layer out from the background so I can see my cool, cool parchment. Alright, so there's basically the dungeon. I'm going to turn this grid opacity down. We don't need it to be a blinding grid. And you can play with this too. You can have it um, just on the floor and not the wall by rearranging the layer, you know. Um, you could have it embossed. You can go in here and you can do like bevel and emboss. 
uh, it's not doing too much. Yeah, this one's not doing too much. Maybe if I do it outside. Boss. Hotter pebble. Well, you can screw around with it. Sometimes it does better than that. Maybe it's because my opacity is low. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so at this point, you just add details. Uh, what I like to do also, just like I did with my characters thing, is I like to add a folder, change this one, let's change, call this one map, or maybe main, main D for main dungeon. And uh, I'll put the floor in there. Floor in there, which I never labeled. Layer properties, floor. <sighs> the wall. <clears throat> put them layer them properly. Okay. Um, now I've pre-made my characters over here. I can just drag my character folder onto my new map and pop them in. And there they all are, in their own little folder, all labeled. So it's very convenient. I can just select them as I need and move them around. So if the game's going and people are moving around the map, this is a very easy way to keep them in. And notice how they're all the right height for being to scale a five foot square because I set everything up to scale already. Um, go in so you can actually see the actual, pixel, actual pixels. And so you can see what the map would look like up close. And go back to the main dungeon and you can really start tweaking more layers, add a layer for every little thing. I'm going to make little doors, and maybe I'll make them stone doors. I'll get gray, and i use my square brush for doors, and I'll just make little doors where I want them. And they don't look very good. They're kind of just like bland, so it's fancy them up with bevel and boss and drop shadow. You know? Um, could even do a pattern overlay and do something like you know I've got these various crystals or various textures or whatever that one's kinda neat oops okay and then I'll just say okay you can mess with this forever and then every door you paint now is gonna look like that. Maybe these aren't. Maybe these are spider web doors or something. You know, you can you can be imaginative. It's, it's fun about making your own dungeons. Sit there and tweak. Now I don't know if I have enough time to show like secret doors and stuff, but that's that's how you do it. I mean, it's not hard. Um, you can do quickie dungeons like this. Whip them out. And if I want to play it in a game, and I, what I like to do, I guess one thing I'll mention, is I like to do another layer on right under my grid, or over it, what is it whatever, um, that's the fog of war, the un, unexplored areas. So I'll make it, I filled it with black, <coughs> make my opacity lower so I can see what I'm doing. I'll go in and erase, erase where I've been. So all the characters have been in this room already, or at least this one has. I use a soft brush just because you know, it's like candlelight or something. You know, leave some shadow. Doesn't look so harsh. <sighs> Erase the black where they are. And I like to reveal a little of the wall because what's the point of making a nice wall texture if you never see it? And maybe I want to even reveal the paper. You know, uh, sometimes I don't because I don't want them to know that 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 north is the end of the dungeon. You know, but. There comes a point where you're going to want to show off your art. And I want to make sure that they can see the doors, so I make sure that I erase well over the doors. There. And let's bring this to full. That's the PC map. That's what they know. So what I'm doing is I go back to my Select tool, and I, if I want to just select the partial area of the map or the whole thing or whatever, I can go Edit, Copy Merged. And that will copy everything in here as I see it. And I can just paste this into a chat, like I use MS in chat. I can just paste it in there and send it as the file. Um, or I can go File New and paste it in there. And now that's a single layer map. 
and I can save this for the internet or JPEG or whatever uh, and send it to the players but I still have my main map here with all my labels and everything else I think on the tutorial one that I you know I have labels I have secret rooms uh, the secret rooms I like to do they're basically I just turn the opacity down so I know where they are but if I turn it all the way up they disappear actually you can kinda see them still you can play with that and make them look really good so that you can't even see them but um, plenty of ideas with, with layers it, you can really you can really play a lot with um, with effects and this one you can see the parchment I add like folds and more stains and whatever like I was talking about in the previous tutorial so there there it is I hope that helps um, use layers layers are your friend and don't be afraid to experiment with different layer properties layer settings uh, you can make a whole bunch of layers together and it might seem ridiculous but then if you just link them all and merge them into one uh, it simplifies everything really quick and you still get pretty good results so next time you want to make a dungeon map don't just do a simple one in paint do one in photoshop and spice it up a little bit <laughs>